Hello all! Originally I had a different video planned for today, but it was taking too long to research and the algorithm demands to be fed, so I had to switch up topics. Instead I thought I'd put together a video on a strange class of vessel, the Steam Runner class starship. In real life, this class was designed by Alex Yeager working at Industrial Light and Magic. The final concept was a mixture of two designs created, with the saucer section combined with the boom and nacelles of a different one, which was inverted to fit the new silhouette. There were several alterations to the design that had the nacelles connected to the saucer only, and the secondary hull not touching them, as well as a four nacelled version. It was from these two concepts that the final design was born, and although originally more rounded, the CGI model, built by Larry Tan and Paul Theron, was created for Star Trek First Contact, and hammered these out into more geometric panels. This ship bore the design styles of the anti-Borg Starfleet that would later be used in Deep Space Nine as part of the Starfleet's Dominion War arc, so the vessel was very low profile and made to look more aggressive and dangerous than your typical Federation ships. Over its time, the model was remade and resized in its different appearances, with it being smaller in Deep Space Nine at only 243 meters. Since then, other figures for its scale have been stated. There was a little bit of confusion around the name, with it originally being referenced to as the Stream Runner, but then the R was dropped in the design process and the class name changed to Steam, and it stuck. In universe, the ship was also designed with a more aggressive purpose in mind. The Steam Runner was constructed primarily at Utopia Planitia fleet yards alongside the Copernicus Lunar Shipyard and the Andorian Imperial Shipyards. The Defiant class stands as Starfleet's only true battleship at this time, but the Steam Runner and the vessels of this era like Akira, Sovereign and Norway all were constructed following the needs of the fleet in this dark era. This was under the auspices of the Perimeter Defence Directive in response to the threat the Borg posed. Starfleet was already prototyping the Defiant class at this time, but that vessel had proven to be temperamental in its design phase and had even been shelved for a time, so instead Starfleet began several scaled back projects instead. Whereas the Defiant was seen to be a skirmisher, the Steam Runner was to undertake lighter escort duties but powerful enough to handle a fight. It additionally was created with interception and electronic warfare in mind, while its speed and combative nature gave it a great use as a surveillance craft in hostile areas. If it was discovered eavesdropping, it could bite back before escaping. In the lore, it's mentioned that how easily these ships were assembled and compact their interiors were, meaning Starfleet was able to churn out quite a few of these in a short amount of time. Indeed, it was first commissioned in 2370, and there were many in service three years later. Such vessels would patrol Federation borders and respond to incursions, but during the Dominion War, well, it was common to assign several such vessels to a small recon fleet that would dart into dangerous territory, grab scans and intelligence, and escape again, fighting their way out if needed. Snatch and run raids. If they could speak, I imagine something like, Hey, what's going on here? Nice, give me that. Yoink, <laughs> don't follow, or I'll cut you. I mean, ideally they would not be spotted at all, but I mean the Defiant had a cloak and these didn't. Naturally, such intel gathering missions means that alongside the speed and firepower, they needed accurate sensors, and they did, with larger areas of their superstructure than normal dedicated to sensor systems and running off three separate dedicated computer cores. These were also utilised in its advanced cyber warfare suites, which, as I've mentioned before, must be an area of ship combat that we never see but nonetheless exists. All this taken into consideration, the Steam Runner was given the profile of a tactical operations escort. The vessel was a conservative 356 metres long, 270 wide, and 79.5 metres tall, across 18 decks. Its crew capacity was 200 personnel, with a 550 maximum for evacuation purposes. At warp, it was a rather quick vessel, slower than the top-of-the-line Sovereign, but on par with the Galaxy in a smaller subspace profile. 
It could achieve warp 9.6 for 12 hours and peaked at 9.7. Its standard cruise factor was warp 7. Its impulse engines were capable of rapid manoeuvring and high speeds, taking it to 0.9 the speed of light at maximum velocities. Although fast, this was impractical because outside of warp bubbles time dilation effects are possible at high impulse. It was armed with 11 Type 10 phaser arrays, the standard high end yield for its era, although some were able to have cannons fitted. It also had four torpedo launchers, but the four ones could launch in a 270 degree arc, so they had surprising coverage. Like the Defiant class and other ships Starfleet produced for combat, its hull was covered in ablative armour in places to dissipate energy weapon attacks that made it through its deflector shielding. When the Dominion War came to a close, Starfleet continued to deploy the Steamrunner on patrol missions to defend its borders, but over time as the crisis faded, they found themselves being assigned to exploratory survey missions, their dedicated sensor systems making them ideal for scientific study. They were not the only class of combat ship that found themselves being retooled for scientific purposes, but at least the class persisted for some time. We don't see them in the finale of Star Trek Picard, although it's likely they were still in use, considering that the Akira, Defiant and Lunar classes, its contemporaries, were still in existence too. So that covers the lore for this small, heavily caffeinated vessel, and it's one that I never really gave much thought to. I sort of mentally lump it into the same category as the Saber and Norway classes, which is unfair as although they featured at the same time, subsequent lore adds to those ships and differentiates them from just being Starfleet's battleships that were not the Defiant. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick and I'll see you later for another lore video. Thanks again, and goodbye.